Malaysia, truly Asia. On this episode of Travelog, we take you to the heart of Taiwan's biggest city, Taipei. Get yourself a hit of culture at the Palace Museum, and then get in touch with your romantic side in Dan Shui. Be sure to stuff yourself at one of the many food markets on offer here, and empty your cash on a ridiculous shopping spree. But above all, enjoy everything that this vibrant city has to offer. I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travel Log, and welcome to our Taiwan series. I've literally just arrived in Taipei on our little three-week adventure, and I'm so excited about discovering this city. Although we're only here for a shortish amount of time, we're going to attempt to cram in as much as is physically possible. On a personal level, I can't wait to hike up Ali Shan and maybe bump into some of the Aboriginal tribes up there. Also, get a bit of R and R down on the beach and catch a bit of tan. So get comfortable. First stop, Taipei City. Surrounded by mountains at the northern tip of the island, with the sea just a stone's throw away, Taipei is a bustling melee of skyscrapers, temples, markets, and motor scooters. All major cities are melting pots of some description, and the chief ingredients in Taipei's own particular pot are tradition and modernity. It's a high-tech, innovative city with a distinct local character. I'm not afraid to show who it is and who it's going to be, not to mention who it was. So if you're a culture vulture, then fear not. It's also one of the best cities on earth to gorge yourself with exquisite food on every corner. Just in case you're worried about piling on the pounds, you'll easily burn them off with plenty of shopping to keep your better halves happy. Welcome to Taipei's very own Palace Museum. It's my first stop in the city, and it should be yours too, because over two million people come here every year, making it the number one tourist attraction in Taiwan. It's full of Chinese art and historical artifacts. It's definitely one of the world's finest collections of its kind. And although the museum opened in 1965, the arduous journey that brought the priceless treasures here began many years before that. It started during the Second World War, when 20,000 crates full of Chinese history began an odyssey by rail, truck, ox cart, raft and foot. The purpose being to keep them out of the clutches of the Japanese occupying forces. Incredibly, not a single item was lost or damaged. Many of these crates eventually made their way to Taiwan. The Palace Museum now has a collection of some 6,000 works of art representing the best of 5,000 years of Chinese creativity. Yet there are just a fraction of the more than 700,000 paintings, tapestries, books, porcelain, bronzes and other objects that are stored here. There are several national treasures that really ought to be on your must-see list when you come here. Among them is the Mao Gong Ting, a cauldron-like basin dating from the Western Zhou Dynasty in the 11th century BC. On the inside of the Ting is a 500 character inscription. This inscription is considered a calligraphic masterpiece as it is not only an authentic record of history but also high in artistic 
and literary value. The characters explain that the Ting originally belonged to Mao Gong, a relative of the Zhou dynasty ruler. With the government of the time being weak and incompetent, the emperor enlisted Mao Gong to rectify matters, sending him a number of gifts as an incentive. The Ting was cast by Mao Gong himself to record the event and express his gratitude. Today, if the evident excitement among the crowds is anything to go by, it's we who should be expressing our gratitude to Mao Gong for leaving us such a splendid work of art. How on earth did they manage to inscribe bronze like that back then? Succulent piece of pork. I just want to bite into it right now. At the Palace Museum, a select few items are on permanent display. They include the meat-shaped stone we saw earlier and the exceptional jadeite cabbage, a jade carving made to look like pok choy. The most popular items in the museum are housed together in the special permanent exhibition room. The exhibits are rotated on a regular basis every few months, where it's said to take a full 12 years to display the entirety of the collection. Now, I definitely recommend hiring one of these audio books really helped me through the day. But if you want a free tour, come here at 10 a.m. in the morning or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, you can get yourself a free English tour. However, personally, I think one day wasn't enough for me at the Palace Museum. A newer part of the Palace Museum organizes regular exhibitions with the younger generations in mind. Here, traditional impressions of art are combined with a more modern approach. So I'm in a slightly special part of the Palace Museum where they're bringing tradition into modern life. So drinking tea within this modern art piece, old is new. This newly evolving concept is not confined to the Gugong. The Cloud Gate Dance Theatre Group blends modern sensibility with traditional Asian mythology, folklore and aesthetics. Work was inspired by the aesthetics of Chinese calligraphy. We don't try to imitate the calligraphy, but the spirit of the calligraphy, the energy. Since the dancers are trained in martial arts, in Tai Chi, in Qigong, that's our, 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 our main diet. Their latest production, Cursive, was inspired by ancient Chinese calligraphy and their related movements. Their highly innovative approach has earned the Cloud Gate Group extensive international acclaim. It's now acknowledged as Taiwan's premier dance troupe. This theme of old is new, which in a way revitalizes the traditional culture, has also carried itself admirably into the retail world. France Porcelain is an internationally recognized brand from Taiwan. You can find everyday utensils with a twist, in that they are also high quality pieces of art. From the line, the collection, the shape, you can see that the front collection is kind of fusion of West and the East, uh, olden days and the modern days. Actually, the painting way is based on Qin Dynasty, right. but we give it, it more modern-like. So uh, you, can t you can look like uh, the, uh, the butterfly or the bird is uh, become very uh, vivid, ah. just like a real, real, uh, real stuff. So yeah. you, bring, you bring the paintings alive? Yes, yes, that's right. This collection here is uh, we uh, worked with a uh, National Palace Museum. Right. Actually, we uh, interpreted a uh, lot collection from this painting. You can, t you can see from the, these oh, pages. Okay, okay, you I see, see. that la is a uh, uh, flat sketch, but we give it life and uh, uh, interpret it into a 3D uh, tabletop collection. Right, uh -huh. very impressive. Can, so <laughs> is, this, is this just for show or can we buy? Sure, of course. Mixing tradition with modernity can be seen as a clever vehicle for financial success. 
but it also shows a willingness to promote a deeper understanding of traditional culture among the younger generations. This has been made all that much easier when you just stroll around the city and see how much art has transcended into everyday life. So uh, when you come to Taiwan, one of the main things that you simply have to do is head to the many night markets they have. And the one that we're in here is called Shilin. And it's arguably, it's undisputably the king of night markets in Taiwan. It's got a history of over 100 years. And as you can see, it's renowned for food. Food is its main thing. Night markets are an essential element of life in Taiwan and a top attraction for visitors. They burst into life every night in towns and neighborhoods throughout the island. Xilin Night Market in Taipei is the largest and oldest of them all, and it's renowned for the quality and variety of its food, as well as its budget prices. And you can buy almost anything here. This is what? I don't know what this is, I'll give it a go. Oh, peppery, I think chicken or something. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Do be wary of those funny if it hadn't been me eating it moments. But above all, take in the fantastic insight into the life of the Taiwan people that Xinyi can offer you. Thanks to the subtropical weather, you can eat here very late. And most people do. Regional snacks from the island, food from all over China, Japanese dishes, as well as international treats, keep this place packed every night. Bear in mind that the majority of these markets are 24 hours. Perfect for all you night owls, or anyone feeling a little peckish after a night on the tiles. Dominating the backdrop of the whole city is the famous Taipei 101. Those who are scared of heights, you better look away. So I've just stepped off the world's fastest elevator, which goes up at a pretty swift 1,010 meters per minute. I'm at 508 meters at the Taipei 101, and just to state the really shockingly obvious, if it's a bright, clear, sunny day, like it is today, come up here. There's a view of the entire city, all the way to the Danshui River and beyond. Have a look. 300 years ago, the area where modern-day Taipei now stands was a lake. As the lake drained away, the rising lake bed formed what is known today as the Taipei Basin. In the early 18th century, Han Chinese, mainly from Fujian province on the mainland, began to settle here. With time, the new arrivals turned the area, nurtured by the Dantre River, into a flourishing trade port, which subsequently grew into the modern city we know today. Right, as far as I'm concerned, there's never a bad time for a cup of coffee. In this place, I'm fascinated to find that it's not just the coffee-making techniques that are old school. So too are the majority of the clientele. Taiwan's coffeehouse culture took root during the Japanese colonial period, around the turn of the 20th century. And like in France, it has been embraced wholeheartedly ever since. In Taiwan, it definitely seems to be ingrained in the lifestyle, not just a passing trend. The construction of Taipei's metro, known as the MRT, or Massive Rapid Transit System, revolutionized transport around the city in the 90s, and is definitely one of the best ways to get around. It's clean, modern, and efficient. The announcements are given in four different languages, English, Mandarin, Southern Fujian dialect, and Hakka dialect, which really highlights the diversity of people found on the island. 
I don't have time to become fluent in any of the dialects before I arrive at Longshan Temple. Now this is the ideal place to soak up some of Taiwan's vibrant religious traditions. Longshan is the island's oldest and most famous temple. Established in 1738, Dragon Mountain Temple is a reference to a mountain and sacred temple in Fujian province, where a sizable part of the area's original inhabitants came from. It's principally a Buddhist temple dedicated to Guan Yin, the goddess of mercy. However, thanks to the diversity of the local community back in the day, there are more than a hundred deities worshipped here. Today happens to be the birthday of Wen Shu, a disciple of the Buddha Sakyamuni. Wen Shu, being associated with wisdom, intelligence and realization, attracts an overwhelming number of students praying for good exam results. We've all been there. When it comes round to exam time, you need all the help you can get. Right, back onto the metro line, and after our cultural immersion at the temple, it's time for some R&R &R in the sun. Pretty scenic way of taking the subway, huh? Final stop on the red line, Dan Shui, and everyone gets off. Set on the banks of the Dan Shui River, about 20 kilometers north of Taipei, you'll find a town steeped in history and tradition. Dan Shui was the main point of contact between Chinese and foreign merchants in the 19th century, during its heyday as the island's major port. Originally known as Hu Wei, the name Dan Shui literally means fresh water and is thought to have been given by early Chinese seafarers. So this is where it all began. Got the Dan Shui River and then this little town of Dan Shui here that gradually grew into the big city that is Taipei behind. And just over there on the right, we've got the sea. So you get this very refreshing, salty uh, air that comes through. It's perfect to spend half a day out in the sun here. It's really lovely. Dan Shui is one of the most popular destinations for a day trip outside Taipei. The sun's shining, then don't hesitate to take the metro or to hop onto a boat. It's the way that it should be true. You're good for me. It's the easiest place for urbanites to escape to, since it's only half an hour away from the city. A lot of people even enjoy cycling here from the city centre. Above all though, this is a very, very romantic spot to bring your special someone. It's peaceful. It's a refreshing sea breeze. It's the way that it should be true. You're good for me. We go walking. It's the way that it should be. A sunset may be the way to a woman's heart, but for a man, it's more often than not through his stomach. Now, how many things can you genuinely say you don't mind queuing for? So I've arrived at one of Taiwan's most famous exports. That's Din Tai Fung. It's an incredible Bowser restaurant, which I've been lucky enough to taste when I was in Beijing. They also have branches in New York, as well as many other countries. Now, you see behind me, this place is full of people. They're all queuing to get in. And it's definitely worth doing. I'm going to have a look. Established in 1969, Din Tai Fung was once voted one of the top ten restaurants in the world by the New York Times. It's most famous for its succulent, juicy dumplings, filled with a whole host of flavours inside a thin layer of skin. Dumpling chefs have to undergo three months training just to learn the art of rolling the skins, followed by another three to master wrapping it. Each is sealed with exactly 18 folds and weighs in at a precise 21 grams. There's no beating the taste of perfection. Whether you're a morning person or not, you'll find it hard not to get drawn out of bed by the energy that can be felt as the sun rises in Taipei. How many other places on earth would you find the vast majority of old people 
in a city being so active so early in the morning. These scenes in Taipei almost make you want to grow old just so you can join in. Soon, however, the poetic and captivating throngs of elders are joined by the pre-work commute. And this is when you'll witness the raw pace of Taipei life. Mopeds as far as the eye can see. Is the whole of Taipei awake already? While some people are going to work, others need to work on their creative shopping. I love strolling around some of the shops here. It's so, uh, so much creativity. Can't tell whether I'm in a modern art gallery or, uh, or in a shop or a bit of both, I think. You can find big malls everywhere in the world, but in Taipei, a lot of them have an added edge. The city openly embraces creativity, and that reaches into many of the shops. If you're looking for funny, unique, or quirky gifts, then this is the city for you. Taiwan has its very own Anthony Gaudi in the form of artist Xie Li Xian, who has created an imaginative and dreamlike restaurant out of sprayed concrete, draft wood, and her own clay sculptures. She's eagerly waiting to show me around. Hello. 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 我的建筑叫做五角船板是因为这一块船板而得名的因为我在海边捡木头的时候呢刚好捡到这一块船板船板上面刚好有一个五角的旧币所以呢我用这样子的感动来当我的店名啊所以这个饭店的名字因为叫
Anyone interested in free food for a kiss? Here, everyone is having fun, and it's as much about eating good food as it is about having a really good blowout. The atmosphere is loud, but in a friendly way. This is the lifestyle of many young people in Taipei, where the term work hard, play hard is very fitting. You get the feeling that Taipei really is a city that never sleeps. The young people coming home from a night out run into the oldies ramping up their exercise. So there seems to be people awake at all times of the day. However, eating and drinking is only one of the popular pastimes on offer to Taipei's three million or so people. I'm going to speak a bit more quietly so I don't disturb everyone here reading their books, but it's a Tuesday night and if you look at the time, it's 10 past 10 at night and you can see that this place is absolutely packed full of people reading books, reading magazines and generally educating themselves. Chen Ping 24-hour bookstore highlights the other, more erudite side of the city nightlife. Taipei is captivating, exhilarating and manages seamlessly to combine contrasting elements in so many ways, maintaining traditional culture whilst allying it with a more populist and modern way of life. Mopeds and a 24-hour lifestyle coexist happily with temples and traditional values. Above all, it's a place that deserves all the time you can spare and that will give you so much in return. I think I'll take this one with me. What a city. Over the last couple of days, I've had some absolutely top-class food and I got to see an artifact that's over 8,000 years old at the Panis Museum. And if that's how the rest of the trip's going to be, I simply can't wait. But as I've said, this is just the start of our adventure around Taiwan. So make sure you tune in. I'm Mark Edwards and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travelog.